Welcome to a brand new series. This is Andrew's Workshop Projects. I visited my friend Andrew to see how the four-stroke engine project was going. But it didn't look well at all, so we gave it a proper burial and moved on to something more sensible. Andrew has decided to build a Stuart 7A steam engine, which is already well on the way and looking good. But first, what about the four-stroke engine? Andrew really has run out of patience with this thing. And quite frankly, I'm not surprised. This was Andrew's first attempt at an internal combustion engine, and the workmanship standard is good. But after making a new piston ring, oh yes, and a new piston, not forgetting a new rotary valve machine to very accurate dimensions, it's still not very good. We were going to try and start this today, but Andrew was already in a state of despair when I got there. And of course, I was of little help in this situation. I just handed him a Stanley knife, just in case he decided to end it all. Thankfully, he didn't use the Stanley knife, which is good really, because otherwise there wouldn't have been a video today. He decided to have one final attempt to make the engine run. He fitted the carburetor, the rotary valve and the timing belt, and here he's just adjusting the tension of the belt. When I first saw what he was making, it was reminiscent of an engine I used to have, a Weber T4 40 size engine. Andrew produced a manual for one of these engines. It's blurred because of copyright issues. The manual shows in detail the construction of a Weber T4. There were some similarities between the T4 and this thing that Andrew's been building, but the similarities were not good. I think what finished him off was the fact that he very carefully made a third rotary valve, and that scored almost immediately. We decided to have a go at starting it. But as soon as any fuel got into the engine, things went drastically wrong. The timing belt was slipping. Here is Andrew's live description of what happened. The new belt broke. Yeah. I think this belt's slipping. I think it's slipping on the, on the what's name. Just, just watch it, your side. If you watch this, it's yeah, not spinning. In the previous clip you can clearly see that the belt is slipping. And when I flexed the belt, I felt pain in my finger. That's because the steel belting inside the belt itself had broken up. At this stage I passed Andrew a practical solution. And this clip shows me making my finger bleed. Ow! No, I'll tell you what's up with it. Oh, it's coming apart. Look. Yeah, you can see it. Look, you see the fibres. There, look. Yeah. What are we going to do with it now? Nothing. Just cut that off with a pair of pliers before anybody else pulls it and goes, ouch. A man and his DRO. It's not all bad news in this episode. This is the new DRO that Andrew received from Warco. As you can see, it's fitted to his Warco WM18B milling machine, which is quite a good machine and works very well indeed. Andrew keeps suggesting that I buy one of these, but no, I like the really crappy one that I've got. Nowhere near as good as this one, perhaps, but it does the job. It cuts metal and cuts it very well. I'm talking myself out of buying a more upmarket milling machine, and if I did buy one, I think I would buy a Bridgeport. I am not a wealthy man, contrary to what some viewers seem to think. I remember getting a lot of bad comments from one particular person when I bought the large showman's engine. And since I sold it, I don't get so many bad comments now. I don't buy big flash expensive machines for the simple reason I like to make these videos for beginners and show that you can make good things on modest machinery. If later on you buy a more expensive machine, then your workmanship will automatically improve from the experience you've gained using inferior equipment. Over now to the Stuart 7A steam engine that Andrew's building. He's really cracking on with it. He's machined the flywheel, made the main bearings, and he's machined the crankshaft from the solid. I must mention that my friend Andrew is not a time-served engineer or machinist, and he's only been doing this sort of thing for a couple of years. In fact, this Stuart 7A steam engine is his first attempt at a steam engine. Andrew's first attempt at machining a crankshaft from the solid went a little bit wrong. Another part for the drawer of shame. 
If at first you don't succeed, put a piece of stone on your bench and bang your head against it, then pick yourself up off the floor and make the part again. Over now to Andrew. What we do is we make two of everything and then get the third one right. And if you can see just there, so that means that is bent. But that was a, a day's work. Yes, a day's work. Maybe not a lot in industry, but quite a lot in a model engineer's workshop. Here's the story so far on the 7A. He really is getting on with this. Andrew intends to finish this engine using an unorthodox method, instead of painting it like everyone else does. Andrew's going to varnish some of the metal parts and leave them metal, for instance, the flywheel spokes. He's machined this flywheel to my instructions, inasmuch as when you machine a flywheel, make sure you get the inner part true before you start on the outside. Once he's finished this engine, and it should be quite an interesting project, he's going to mount it on a piece of this sort of composite, marble-type stuff. But not this piece, this is just a sample. And as you can see, when the engine sits on it, it's too small. Everything is in order in the steam chest. There's sufficient play on the crossbar, on the slide valve. And he's going to leave the steam chest cover more or less as it is. He's going to clean it up, but leave the number 7 in place. Probably that's because when Andrew really gets a steam engine bug, he'll build so many of them, he will need to know which one this is. And of course, this is a number 7, a 7A to be exact. Andrew wanted to show me how accurate the crankshaft was, his second attempt at the crankshaft, that is. So he set up a dial test indicator on a piece of steel and put the engine on the workbench. This is not a perfect way to get an exact reading because things are moving around. But as you can see, it's quite accurate. Now for a bit of CAD, that is, Keith Appleton design. I sketched on a piece of paper ideas and layouts for making eccentrics for Stuart steam engines. Often I deviate from the drawings for Stuart eccentrics and eccentric sheaves because the way they do it the groove in the middle of the eccentric strap means that the strap doesn't have quite as much surface area in contact with the sheave. Where possible, I make eccentrics like steam locomotive eccentrics with a very thin lip at each side. These are the rough castings for the eccentric straps to use with the 7A reversing gear. I think Andrew may be making it non-reversing to start with and then machining these two and retrofitting them. They will both need to be bent so that the forks align where they drive the expansion link. Andrew has his own YouTube channel, the address is on screen at the moment. It's called Model Engineering Adventures, and will show the building of this 7A in more detail. I just visit Andrew periodically. And that is it for this first episode of Andrew's Workshop. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.